competition. Now, quantum computing is estimated to reach $2 trillion in value by 2035. But Bank of America analysts suggest that the real value could be the entirety of global GDP. This year's Bank of America Research Conference highlights new disruptive innovations and seeks to answer questions on where the true value may lie. I'm pleased to say that him, Israel, MV, and head of global thematic research team at Bank of America is joining us this morning. I'll start the conversation by getting your thoughts on AI, if I may, because this has also been an important topic of your research and your team. And there is an ongoing debate here about AI valuation. So I just would like to get started by getting your thoughts on what you think is the theme and the mood ultimately in AI at this stage. First of all, it's a pleasure to be here. And yes, the debate is going on again and again. Are we in a bubble or not? I urge you to think that the story is so much bigger than the next quarterly numbers, the next investment or the next TPS. We are, we are doing a mistake again and again with AI. When we think on AI, we think about those apps that can summarize our email, build our presentation, or make our work a little bit more efficient. This is not why we're spending the trillions of trillions of dollars. AI is so much bigger. To go and say that AI is all about the chat GTPs of the world and, and, and application to summarize my emails, to say that we build the internet revolution to have Spotify or the mobile revolution to book an Uber. It's only one application. The story is bigger. We are looking at AI simulations that can create drugs, can calculate the weather, can dramatically improve food consumption, that can do so many things that humans can't do uh, and crunch data in a better way that will about to change everything create new materials. We're already starting to see that, improve industrial, the industrial revolution. We are so focused on the quarterly numbers, on the current investment, on the very small application that we are seeing today, that we are really missing the big picture. However, though, last year you also mentioned how when it comes to the energy side of things, we are not prepared for this AI revolution. So is that still limiting the growth that you project for AI? Definitely, this is one of the bottlenecks that we are seeing right now. This revolution is happening so fast and we need to build all the infrastructure, all the data centers so fast that we just don't have enough resources. We need to build roughly 50% more data centers in the next couple of years. If we will build those data centers, and I'm talking about those huge AWS, Azure data centers, our size, we are talking about more land than Singapore to host them and more energy than Japan to power them. We need so much more. We need more water. People are not talking about that, but every 40 commands on your application could be ChatGTP or Gemini drinks. Uh, every 40 commands drinks one liter of water. There are billions of commands a day. So we need more water, we need more natural resources, we need more energy. Those are the bottlenecks. This revolution is happening so fast, warp speeding, that nothing like we've ever seen in the past. And we do need so much more resources. On the other side, there's a clear interest to develop the technology, not to limit the progress over here. So we have to balance and we have to come up with new ways of, of powering out our networks and, and generating more energy. And we, we are moving from a world from energy transition to a world of energy addition, yes. Thinking about AI, but also the uh, ramifications around it, including uh, you know, investments in energy, how are you looking at the split between private and public companies in that context? Sure. The market is moving private. It's very, very clear. We used to we used to live in a world of unicorns. Now we're actually moving to the world of data corns, which are private companies with a valuation above one billion, one, uh, ten trillion billion dollars. Then to hectocorns, which are above one hundred billion dollars, and very soon probably to a world of kilocorns, which are private companies above a trillion dollars. We are seeing the trend that the private market is growing very, very fast, um, much faster than the, the public market. Market. Interestingly enough, if you look at the last uh, uh, 20 years, the private market, the public market in the United States, almost half, while the private market have grew up more than 40 times. We are living in a world that everything needs to move very, very fast. We live in a world that a lot of the IP and the innovation is in the private side. As a result, we're seeing more and more money moving to the private market. This will continue to be the case. We're seeing that now there are more financing opportunities. There's more money in the private market. And as a result, 
companies are not in a rush to go public anymore. We've seen that the, in the, just in the last 10 years or so, the time from being from forming a startup to getting IPO went up to 16 years. It's actually 33% more than only 10 years ago. So market is definitely moving more and more private. Um, companies are chasing private market, and uh, and we're not seeing any not seeing this trend reversing. Now, as we approach the end of the year, Hema, I would also like to get your thoughts in terms of what you think will be the mega trends for 2026. Perfect. So, yes, of course, we're going to talk about the big application of AI, but we need to talk more and more about the Q day, about the revolution that's about to come and change everything, quantum computing. This moment of the Q day is coming sooner, faster than everybody projected. The timelines are getting shorter and shorter. And this day that quantum computer will outperform classical computers that can make every calculations out there and can change everything. We already have demonstrations from Google on a quantum chip that made in five minutes more calculation than the entire uh, universe have existed in terms of time, more than 10 decitillion years of calculations in five minutes. We saw more and more applications that are coming and, uh, and this moment is getting faster and faster. This is the machine that will allow us to calculate everything. It will not replace classical computer. It will actually increase the demand for classic computers. But from generating everything and calculating from ev everything from science, drugs, semiconductors, technology, we also see those machines that can hack every defense out there, that can we need to replace all the cybersecurity investments out there. Right. Things are mm -hmm. about to change. This is the, probably one of the most radical technologies we've ever seen. Let's see indeed what sort of developments we'll get when it comes to quantum computing in the year. Thank you for joining us this morning. Hayim Israel, MD and Head of Global Thematic Research Team at Bank of America.